Today, November 29th, Kevin Frankie filed in the state of Utah for divorce, as we understand it. So we actually have some massive developments in the Ruby Frankie, Jody Hildebrandt case, and this revolves around Kevin Frankie. So Kevin has actually been quite vocal in his actions as of late, um, which is rel relating back to my past video where he actually approached a state senator and wants there to be firmer you know, laws and requirements for life coaches, mental fitness trainers. Well, it actually transpires that Kevin Frankie has actually filed for divorce. And here are the divorce um, documents here. So it's just like a submission. Um, and we'll go through that. I think this is absolutely massive, coupled with the fact that he did approach the state senator to try and push forward laws to help prevent this kind of thing from happening again. And I think it's a really big thing. I've always been extremely questionable on Kevin Frankie's motives, especially when he you know, threaten legal action against his daughter Sherry for going into the house and retrieving belongings. And I know a lot of people felt very off-putted, off, is that the right word? Felt very, you know, it was not a good thing for him to do under any circumstances. And of course, you know, we know what he was like on the Eight Passengers YouTube channel when the channel was actually active. Although Kevin has always said that he is innocent in all of this, that, you know, that Jody has destroyed their marriage. He's always put a lot of emphasis on Jody rather than Ruby. And we might have an inkling as to why, because he's now put forward um a divorce a divorce filing which would make sense as to why he hasn't been speaking to ill will of ruby as it does actually state in their terms and conditions that he's not allowed to do so so here it reads in the district court of utah fourth district court provo utah county in the matter of the marriage of kevin frankie and respondent ruby frankie because this matter involves divorce annulment temporary separation custody parent time child support or paternity the court makes the following orders these orders apply to the petitioner and respondent named above the parties must not harass intimidate or disturb the peace of the other party by any means including electronically commit domestic violence or abuse against the other party or a child use the other party's name likeness image or identification cancel or interfere with telephone utility or other services used by the other party cancel modify terminate change the beneficiary or allow to lapse the voluntary non-payment of premiums. This would involve matters of insurance, such as health insurance, homeowner insurance, life insurance. Um, it then goes on to the petition involves the division of property, personal property or debts. The parties must not transfer, conceal or dispose of, you know, property. I do kind of wonder how that would be, because obviously if they're saying that, you know, you're not allowed to do any of this without... Um, without you know ruby frankie having a say you know kind of thing you've got to be able to divvy it out um i'm i'm just wondering what that situation would even look like I, he wasn't even staying in the home anyway was he so i suppose it would have just been left to ruby it would have technically ruby and the kids were living in it although she was you know part way with jody at that point but I'm just wondering, would she want to keep that house for when she gets out? Like, could you really go back to that house after everyone in your neighborhood knows uh, what has been going on? Do you know? That's just what I'm thinking. And this for me is where it does get interesting in the sense that it makes more sense as to why Kevin will not speak ill will of Ruby. And I believe that they have been told anyway by the family court not to do that. But it does state here, and I won't read all of it, you can just pause and read. It does kind of say, you know, in the present or hearing of the children, do not demean or disparage, talk badly about the other party. Do not say anything that will lead the the children to think badly about the other party. Things which they would have been told in family court. Kevin has really kept up a front just just in my own opinion it might not be in yours i feel like kevin has really uh not wanted to give too much of his feelings away about ruby but will be extremely all guns blazing at jody which did kind of make me go like well you know but it does make more sense especially if he is now wanting to he's now filing for divorce now they have also put forward a domestic relations injunction which basically means that it's like a non-molestation order so if you or your child has been a, a victim of domestic abuse you can put this forward petition for divorce is private so we can't see a whole lot of it but we don't know the actual legal filing the reason for it uh, domestic relations injunction outlining certain measures to 
govern the conduct of both parties involved. That is about all I see on it. This domestic relations injunction is effective for the petitioner when the petition is filed, for the respondent when they receive a copy of the injunction entered by the court. The domestic relations injunction is in, in effect until the final decree is entered, the petition is dismissed, the parties otherwise agree in a writing signed by all parties or the court orders otherwise. And then, um, and then it then goes on. I will leave the other part of it linked just up here if you want to go and have a little look or you can find it um i think it's the law and crime website they also have it as well but my question really is do we think that ruby is expecting this do we think that she is expecting to be like dealt dealt her divorce papers do you reckon she is thinking that this would ever be on her bingo card i really don't know i mean how can you not expect it after after all of this there was always some talk at the very beginning and i don't know if we ever actually clarify whether or not this was true or not but there was some talk at the beginning of ruby you know reaching out to kevin and trying to see if he can get some money that was from an ex cellmate but without any like 100 cl percent clarification it's hard to tell if that was even true or not but here we have it and that seems to be what is happening and that happened yesterday which was wednesday the 29th now they also mentioned on the law and crime network which i did think was super interesting which is a follow-up from what we were talking about the other day where kevin has actually approached a state senator to try and get better laws or any laws really put on for people who want to be um you know mental fitness trainers i always call them mental gymnastics trainers and i can't help it mental fitness trainers um life coaches because there are there's currently none anyone can slap themselves a life coach label and just go out into the world and start giving people advice and kind of acting as a way of a therapist and apparently the state senator had no idea about the eight passenger case um kevin frankie actually went up to him because he heard that he, it was um, extremely early, um, the very foundation hadn't really even put any wording down and Kevin Frankie decided that he wanted to approach him rather than it being the other way around, which I did find quite interesting. No traction on it, no language in it as we understand, but an idea, right? Maybe starting to put pen to paper. He had not even really heard about this case as wow. it seems. So this came from, right. So that's what my reaction was to this. Kevin Frankie reaches out to this state Senator and says, Hey, we need to look into this. And he even pointed to the part where, you know, it ripped apart his marriage. You have to imagine that is involving Frankie and Hildebrandt's relationship. The idea that Kevin would approach this state Senator. I, I are you surprised by that? I am. I also don't know what the timeline looked like of when exactly this happened. I would imagine it's relatively recent, given the fact that lawmakers are starting to meet at the Capitol and go through the process of drafting bills and making change. And obviously there's a large process after you even put the language out there. It's interesting to know that this comes from inside the family to want to make a big change here in Utah about what is qualified and what needs to be put out there to coach people on their lives. Now, in this situation, I do personally think that he is trying to use his experience for good. I know that the counter argument to that is maybe he is just trying to um, set himself as far away from the situation as possible, really taking away all blame whatsoever. And I mean, an element of blame does have to fall on the father for not knowing that any of this abuse was happening in the very first place so the counter argument to you know well well he's just trying to use her, his experience for good is the fact that he was quite you know negligent in the sense that he had no idea this was even happening but was that really just because he couldn't get anywhere near the kids because of ruby and jody that has always been a very it's been a very conflicting topic but i do think the majority of people um do agree that he was ne he was negligent in that area um so maybe now he is just wanting to try and get laws made um and use his own experience that is the you know kinder side of me thinking that is the less cynical side of me thinking but i would love to hear everyone's thoughts and feelings on that i welcome all sorts of um all sorts of opinions on it please let me know down in the comments um i was actually planning to upload and record a completely different type of video that i'm going 
going to do in just a moment um but i thought this was really really important to get out hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are in this world take care of each other take care of yourselves and i'll catch up with you guys in the next video